Mugen, we start with Mugen weapon, right? Let's start with Mugen weapon. Okay, so here we have another harp weapon for fire in 2020, just after the draconic weapon that pretty much power creeps the draconic weapon, coming with the progression skill for Agni, not an EX skill, and Majesty, which is a big F you to that harp. <laughs> not only does it give you health, it gives you good damage for double Agni builds as you need the fire attack up. The Ogi is rather good as well, giving a boost to fire allies damage cap, similar to Fairy Harp. Um, upon being full limit broken, it gained revitalize, pretty much power creeping the refresh on Draconic Harp. Pretty much all around making that harp useless. Feels bad, but only way to describe it. Um, as far about going about barring this weapon, I probably wouldn't currently in the game. Um, there's not much content in the game where you actively would gain back bars. For example, let's say Grand Order High Level, Akasha, Bahamut High Level. There's not much you would gain barring this weapon. It's a good weapon nonetheless for content like Fa, any hard content, Nightmare 150. But barring it, I probably wouldn't do it. Unless you're a fire main and you love playing um, lumberjack, then if you're if you really have the bars laying around and you can you can be okay with a neg three on this weapon, then it's a good weapon. But um, just only in that case, that's a very niche thing. Still a good weapon though. Just that I wouldn't bar it immediately. Ah, <sighs> weapons. Power keeping my freaking Trigonic Harp. I was gonna rock the Trigonic Harp all year, by the way. I was planning to. Feels bad now. <laughs> Anyways, now we're on to Mugen. Mugen's a very strong character. Um, big muscles, big damage. But one thing about Mugen is that even if he's not in his transformed state, he can still perform relatively well. Um, he's a draft, fire attack, Melee harp unit. Um, harp is because apparently he likes singing in the story. So, apparently. Melee, you do have some synergy when it comes to melee units and fire, which is pretty cool, right? Fire does have quite a bit of melee characters. You have Anilla. You can kind of combine Mugen with Anilla and Magna. I will be doing a video on that if the video is not out by this time. You can run the Evoker as well. Fra. That's pretty uh doable um Greya she's okay if you need to spell I wouldn't really run Greya in 2020 but you can but you do have some versatility when it comes to fire units and melee so harp is a dead one thing I will mention though about fire harp though is that Mugen would gain the benefits from Elysian's new skill that gives bonus damage to harp units. So keep that in mind. As we get more harp units, Elysian's bonus skill is gonna be a really big thing. That automatically makes Mugen kind of viable, right? Because people probably know about this weapon by now, but this is a 100 gold moon weapon here. If you go to shop, and you go to trade for moons, it's a very popular harp here. Can't even find it, dude. I probably end up picking one up myself, actually, after the uh, weapons get rebalanced. But there's a really popular heart here somewhere. If I can find it, uh, is it back here, page five? I don't know where it is. Okay, so this harp here gives bonus damage on, I believe, Elysian skill one. So it's been very popular and used in like Alanan builds with Esser. But now with Elysian's new skill, you can also give that buff to main character and Mugen, where they both get, uh, I think, 30% bonus damage. So, it's very, very strong. So Mugen being hard is a very good thing. Even though some people think it's random, it's actually very good for him. When you combine it with Esser and Alan Ann and uh, the other 80% damage units, 80% bonus damage units, excuse me. You can see all his skill. Whoa, they updated it. They sell both Ogis. So his normal Ogi and his base form resets the cooldown on Song of Innocent. 
personally, if you can, I think it's optimal to have Ogid with him one time before he transformed. So you can get two buffs out of his skill. You don't need to. And you can just go right into his blue mode with one buff. But he doesn't cast buffs anymore to the party. And his buffs are permanent. So I would recommend doing one Ogi if you can. Just to activate his skill two twice. And then go into his blue mode. And upon going into blue mode, he gains random buffs that are permanent to him. Any buff that's in Song of Innocence pretty much becomes permanent on a higher multiplier on Mugen. So that means like his bonus damage, I think it's 10%, I believe. On Mugen, it's like 55 on his Oki in blue mode. It's a really big difference. He has substitute, all ally sub, pretty okay. Uh, I think this is the first one in fire, to my knowledge, and a 50% damage reduction. It's decent. I wouldn't say it's like game breaking or anything. Like so many units have like this type of mechanic. So it's nothing like to go home about, but it's still a decent skill. Then we have Song of Innocence here, which gives a random buff. These buffs are all permanent. This is like the first time in the game where we have actual permanent buffs, no matter what the situation is, they will not go off. We have an attack boost. Bonus damage is probably the best one here. Multi-attack boost and supplemental damage, which is probably the second best. Personally, if you can get lucky and get bonus damage and supplemental damage every time, you are a god. Multi-attack is really good as well. Um, I think it's third best here. And the attack boost is kind of okay. I, if I had to guess the attack boost is normal mod, I don't know. But if I had to guess it's normal mod, therefore the attack boost is probably very great for Magna players. But nonetheless, everything here is very good. And personally, the bonus damage is like what you really want to get lucky with. But it's RNG what you're going to get. You don't get guaranteed buffs here. It's RNG. But you can kind of mitigate the RNG by having him do two of his Song of Innocence instead of casting it one time before going into blue. Now, his third skill is just a plain 10k heal. 10k is a massive amount of health. Especially for new players, right? If this if you're new to the game, like a lot of players are now, um, that fully heals you practically. So, oh, the DATA is one buff. I, th I thought it was. I thought it was. Um, I thought. No, it is one buff. Yeah, yeah, I know. You confusing me, bro? I know it's one buff. I know it's one buff. It's not separate. It's four buffs. It's the attack boost, the bonus damage, the double attack, triple attack, and supplemental damage. Okay. Now we have his support skills, and something about his support skills, um, you have to have the ally live to the end of the turn. So things like Christmas Rackham, who generally die on that turn, will not activate his passive. So you need the unit to live to the very end of the turn. He gets a sharp boost to attack specs, boost to hostility. Keep in mind that he, he does not get any defense boost. So what, if you're going to keep Mugen in blue, you need to load him up with a lot of defense because he does get targeted very hard on multi-hitting attacks. Things like Iblis and Fa, um, Grimnir's uh, piercing attack. This matters a lot because he will take a lot of damage. I've had Mugen die a lot because he gets targeted by every hit and he just falls off. He does not have any inherent defense. He's all offense. So you need to invest into defense on him if you want to keep him alive. He gets debuff immunity, which is very strong, and he cannot use any skills. And when he goes into blue, he gets a full heal and removes all debuffs. So keep that in mind. That if you're applying with Zoe, Mugen's gonna be at full health. So if you're going full Amity, Mugen will be at full health. So his damage is gonna be a lot lower because he's gonna be at full health. So just keep that in mind that you don't wanna invest too much into Amity because Mugen's health is gonna be full. He does still good damage, but he's not gonna hit his peak. And then we have his skill 
his second passive skill. When in Rampage, uses an automatic skill every three turns based on Mugen's status. Status effects are, I believe, if he's below 25% charge bar, he gets instant instant Ogi. Um, if he has 10 buffs on him, he will do a 10 hit nuke. If he's below 25% health, he gets a 10k heal. And if in none of those three apply, he gets a one hit massive like nuke that can stun a foe. So, Mugen Blue locks you out of skills. They are changed to another conditional set. And the health is priority. Okay. So, if he's in, let's say he has 10 um, buffs on him and he's in red health. The health will take priority. You sure? Okay. That's about it for Mugen. Um, his EMPs are actually pretty decent too. Personally, with Mugen, I would go about trying to invest into his defense. His defense is really important on him. I would actually max out every defense node. And I probably invest in hostility down. If you're not running Garrison or something, he's going to get targeted quite a bit. So maybe hostility down would help not him help him not be targeted too hard. But I would invest to the defense, uh, critical, and hostility down. How you spread it, it's up to you. But those are the most important to me. Is heal Ogi 10 buff nuke? Stun, nuke, and that all oh, in terms of priority. Okay, the priority is heal, Ogi, 10 buff, nuke, and then stunned. Okay. But that's about it from Mugen. Pretty strong. The stun, nuke, is 1.16. Stun. Are oh, you talking about the um the cap on it? No, the stun is one to three turns, dude. I I had Grim there be stunned for three turns. <laughs> yeah, the stun the stun is three turns on on uh, Mugen.